Hi, this is Brendan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and I'm here with Lady Chow Fung for another episode of Wuxia Weekend. Uh, we are two members short tonight, so we're going to try to hold down the fort and have a discussion on the film Long Road to Gallantry, a 1984 movie directed by Tang Tak Chung. It stars Kenny Ho, Kara Hoi, and Rosamund Kwan. And this is part of our Kara Hoi month. This is the last uh, Wuxia Weekend official episode that we're doing for Kara Hoi, but we will have a special episode over the weekend as well to cover a, a secret movie that, that uh, Lady Chow Fung and I have, have, have in the works. Uh, but this film, it's basically like, I would just describe it as as a really sort of, uh, you know, uh, full-on wuxia film that has pretty much all of the stuff that you kind of expect from the genre. Uh, you know everything from the clan feuds to the the heroic protagonist to the love triangle to you know you know amazing techniques and you know loads of 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 weapon uh choreography and kung fu uh i don't know uh, lady chow fung what before we get into the plot of the film what, you know what what was your reaction to the movie did you like it i liked it it had a typical like early 80s feel um but i enjoyed it i thought it was a good little story of course i love the love triangles um but you're right it does have all the typical um wuxia things that you look for so it was great yeah i i i really enjoyed this one i i uh i i i only got to see it once before the the podcast so i probably won't be able to give us an in-depth uh overview of the plot but i really found myself enjoying it an awful lot Largely because it was just, it was, you know, so much of it was like really standard wuxia, but all the stuff that I really like from wuxia, it just, it just had all of the flavor that I expect when I, when I see a good wuxia movie. And, and I think that the acting especially really helped kind of carry it even further. So, you know, just the, uh, you know, I mean, would you agree that it's a fairly simple, straightforward kind of storyline? It's not, it's not overly complicated, right? No, it's not overly complicated at all. There, I wouldn't even say they're twists and turns, but um, you know there are some things that you just can't quite figure out right away. Don't leave right down to the path you think it would. But um, it's a really good movie, and it's not convoluted, and there aren't like too many characters to get you all confused, and you do see some um, other big stars in it that you kind of might not notice right away. Yeah, and, it, and it's basically, I mean, the, if I had to describe the plot, and again, this is just going off one viewing, so it, it might be a better way to describe it. But I would say it's sort of, there was this big feud over a manual 20 years ago that resulted in, uh, you know, uh, the death of, of one of the sect leader's wives and the death of another sect leader's wife and this, this long-standing grudge between these sects and one of the sect leaders um master lung of thunder gang goes on to become this great villain in the martial world and the 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 other sect becomes uh this sort of righteous sect that that uh seems to uphold the 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 wuxia ideals Uh, but the characters are the next generation and so one of the characters is the daughter of the villain even though she doesn't know it because she's raised by the dragon sect and the the other character uh played by kara hoy is a um uh is the daughter of one of the people that was killed by the villain and so she's seeking revenge and then there's the uh the kenny ho character du meng fei who's kind of thrown into it but it's not really clear what his background is and and the three of them sort of have to deal with the aftermath of this long-standing grudge and it and it's i don't know i've it's it's kind of I, I didn't even particularly care where the story was going i was more interested in following the characters and watching the the love triangle unfold and seeing how they reacted to the situations that they were in yeah i totally uh, agree with uh your summary of the plot kenny ho was kind of just thrown into it he's i guess he was sent out by his master because he was finished his learning so he's been secluded for a while so now he's out in the world on his own and 
supposedly knows right from wrong, the righteous from the villainous, and he gets thrown into this situation where he has no idea what what end is up and um, which girl is righteous and virtuous and which girl is villainous. So it takes some good little twists and turns with the three of them. And uh, yeah, and I, what I liked about it too is I, like a big part of the storyline initially is is that uh, Meng Fei is he's sort of going around the, the the backstory here is that the Thunder Gang is kidnapping young women and in particular one of the one uh, one type of woman that they want to kidnap is uh, are, are members of Dragon Sect because the villain is looking for his daughter and Kara Hoy's character um, uh, Lee Sai Nan. Uh, who wants revenge against the villain. She uses that to her advantage and tries to get captured with the aim of pretending to be his daughter so that she can get close and killing him. And Du Meng Fei is constantly going around rescuing her every time they try to kidnap her. And it's, and it's, and it's, it's, it's kind of played for humor. Um, and it's sort of like a nice little twist on, 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 you know, something that you see a lot in, in, in Wuxia movies. But the, I don't know. I, I like the way that they did that, and I like how that sort of where that leads those characters by the end of the movie, because you really wouldn't expect it to, you know, you wouldn't expect it to get to the point that it does, and it gets there quite efficiently, I think. But um, but I don't know. What, what did you think of that part of the movie? I like that part of the movie because you know uh, Meng Fei is trying to be the chivalrous hero that he is, but he has no clue of why she wants to get captured. So she tries to get res he tries to rescue her every time he thinks that she's in danger. And then he kind of ends up in a little danger himself. But um, yeah, I liked that. And I liked how um, they're at odds at the beginning, but somehow they end up um, really liking each other by the end of the movie. Yeah, and it's it's almost like the the movie is really kind of by the end a love story between him and her, and you know you have you have all these you know that you do have a lot of other interesting details like she has her uncle who was there at the scene when um when 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 this fight over the manual happened he's been you know uh you know sort of uh, planning his revenge for a long time and she's his instrument. And this puts her in a situation where when it comes to light that the Rosamund Kwan character is the, the daughter of, of the villain where, you know, he forces her to go out and try to kill her. And, and so there's just, I don't know, there's just, again, it doesn't feel, it's not like a straight linear plot. It's just like all these interesting chemical reactions going on in the movie where this character is thrown into a situation and you're sort of curious how they're going to, how it's going to play out. Um, and I don't know. It just had it had a lot of like really interesting sites and locations. Like the this, I, I don't know what the proper term for it is, but the the snake fortress, the underground layer that that uh, that Carol Hoy's uncle lives in, it is is I, I thought that was like a marvelous sort of set and design. And and uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say once you got in, and it had hidden traps also, um, which were really cool. Um, there weren't a lot of them, but there were definitely enough to pique your interest. Uh, but I kind of noticed that the outside reminded me of, if you remember, uh, Brave Archer and his mate when they go up to the temple because they're going to take um, Fu Sheng's character up to the, the temple and get him some discipline. Uh, the little the mounds where the female sect lived across from the, the oh the temple. ancient tomb the ancient tomb yeah. sect it looked a lot like that from I'd, the outside I'd, I'd have to watch that again but I think you might be right do you think it looked identical or just similar no pretty much identical okay I'm gonna have to watch that again like it might have been a little bit smaller but I have a little problem with depth perception okay and sizing's off for me. But it, would, it looked pretty much the same. It wouldn't surprise me. They do often reuse these sets and did different angles, and 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 that's a pretty specific look. So it's hard to disguise because it's just right. like a giant head. Um, but the, but also the Thunder Gang uh, headquarters had traps and stuff too. It just it just mm -hmm. had a real adventurous feel. Um, it reminded me of um, what was the movie? Was it was it Shaolin Kung Fu Mystagogue? 
that had a lot of those kinds of elements to it. I'm I'm blanking a little bit, but I I seem yeah, to I recall. Yeah, I didn't see that one. I'm sorry. I didn't see that one. Oh, I, I thought really you saw that, that one with us for some reason. I don't remember seeing it. Oh, okay. Then perhaps I'm I'm mistaken because um, I'm pretty sure it was a movie I saw with you, and we made a comment about that. But I always like when they have these um, when they have these sort of, I, for lack of a better word, Indiana Jones type components to them. You know, like the yes. you know, like the trapped underground layer you know where, where you step on the tile and something happens and there, there was a lot of that going on in this movie um, oh we did watch another movie like that oh, you know what i'm I talking about remember. right yeah i do but i can't remember which well, one it was you know what it is we see so many of these movies that like it's just it, it, you after a while they all kind of start to get muddled do you know what i mean until you know you have to watch yeah. a movie like eight times for it to stand out among all the other films um it's like when you think back to like all the Saturday kung fu that you watched as a kid, or all the Saturday morning cartoons you watched as a kid, and they all kind of they all kind of become one thing. Um, yes, definitely. But I'm going to try to track that down though after we get off and and see if I can find it because I remember commenting on it and and this just kind of had a similar thing going on. But uh, but I don't. Why don't we talk about the individual characters and then I want to get into some of the plot details. So I mean, Meng Fei. He's he's the protagonist. He's one of the protagonists, but we've kind of already covered him. I, I'd I'd like to talk about the Rosamund Kwan character, um, who's Mu Wan Er, who starts out as, uh, you know, she's a member of this dragon sect, which is, we've established as a righteous sect. But towards the middle of the movie, she discovers that 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 her her real father is is Master Lung, who's this ferocious villain. Um, like I, he's like a like. This is probably one of the most wuxia villains I've ever seen, actually, just in terms of how he carries himself, and uh, and and so she's sort of torn. But again, she's one of the, and this is sort of a trope of the genre. She's one of these daughters of an evil master who is herself basically a good person. And so I was just curious, you know, what your feeling on her character was and on Rosamund Kwan's performance. I think Rosamund. Uh... She does a really excellent job. She just has something sweet about her. This isn't the only movie I've seen her in, but she just has something sweet, and you can't imagine that she would ever make some kind of good, evil villain in a movie. I don't, mm. I don't know. But just the fact that she had an evil father, and she kind of had to choose, but she stood up for what she believed in, and chose the path of righteousness even after she finding out who her father was. Well, um, I, oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say her her performance was um, really really good. And I kind of thought that um, Meng Fei would end up with her at the end. Yeah, because she and 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 it seemed like that's what his character wanted until sort of duty kind of in, intruded maybe but I mean, we could talk about that when we get to that that plot point but she actually played a similar character in swordsman 2 as well that was a very similar type of role um, yes and, and and but very different from this one i i think number one swordsman 2 is not a is not filmed in the same way this is very set heavy shaw brothers and that gives it a certain feel and swordsman 2 is a lot more sort of atmospheric you know filmed outside kind of a movie um and the and the tone is just completely different but but i agree i i really liked her performance here and uh uh you know i'm i'm and i and i and i i thought that she was an interesting contrast to the other characters because you have the the kara hoy character who I, again you know character it sort of played to a lot of kara hoy's strengths which is you know she's really good at the um uh I, I don't know what you say, in, like intensely aggressive characters. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Like this is this is one of those types of characters for her. She's very... But she was kind of bratty in this one um, at the beginning. She kind of reminded me a lot of, um, who is it, Candy Wen Earth's characters. Because she did a lot of pouting. Yep, yep. And I thought she was going to throw a couple fits there for a minute. <laughs> Yeah, she did. Yeah, there was definitely a bratty quality to her character. I would agree with that. The, uh, um, 
but she's still it's still that sort of aggressiveness like Bra- i would still file bratty under aggressive like that yeah the, uh, I that, yeah um and, and she's also the character who is sort of dutifully trying to fulfill her uncle's plans of revenge and 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 I think over the course of the movie, what you see happening with her is, 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 is these emotional attachments that she develops with the other two characters kind of keep interfering with her ability to, to really do that properly. Because she has to go and poison uh, the, the, the Mu Wan Ara character, the Rosamund Kwan character. And initially she puts the poison in her tea, but then she... But then she knocks it away yeah. and so that she could see that the poison was in there. Yeah, she... Her character does go through a serious internal conflict. So she wants to kill and take revenge for her um, parents' death, but she's but because she didn't know that the daughter was this girl that she's come to like and be really good friends with, it's just so much emotion inside of her. And. And I like that she decided to have a duel with her. Like she's like she 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 still was trying to honor her uncle's directive, but right. she wanted to do it the right way. And then obviously the uh, um, Kenny Ho's character comes rushing in and, and puts a stop to it. Um, what about the uh, Chief Leng Tian Lei character? Um, you know, he, he what did you think of him? The bad guy. I love. Uh. I liked him. I like the guy who plays him. He, I call yeah. him Elvis because he uh, his long sideburns always <laughs> remind me kind of of Elvis. But um, it was kind of different to see him in such a villainous role, um, and I think he did a really good job in it. Yeah, I was I was surprised actually because um, that actor I think his name is uh, Lung Tian Sang. He's he's in a lot of Shaw Brothers movies, and he and he oftentimes is in in roles that are that are important but you might not always notice as much as some of the other the other performers and here he really impressed me with his his ability to to swagger the way that he needed to for this character like it was a uh this was a this was definitely a swaggering villain in my opinion and, oh yeah definitely and he kind of reminded me of um Michael Chan wise character in well, just in the look. Remember how he changed? Is it in? Um... Oh, geez, we just watched the movie. <laughs> um, T. Lung, broken. You know, the broken piece that goes in, and then oh, he has the, that um, transformation at the end. Uh, the deadly breaking sword. Yep. There we go. I was getting there. Um, it kind of. Re- his look in this movie kind of reminds me of um, Michael Chan wise look in the, in that movie, but without the streaks and the full on beard kind of thing. I don't know. It just, yeah, no, I, I would agree because he's got like a, like a white head of hair, but he's got, a, I, if I recall his beard and stuff looked like it was still dark. And yes. so it seemed like he had this unnaturally whitened hair and his costuming was just very, I don't know. He, he just, I mean, it's he, he seemed like a cross between that and and um and and the Iron Palm sect leader in Brave Archer. Like it's like like that style of villain is what he reminded me of here. Um, yes, like just a good cape wearing villain who's you know, uh, you know, la- laughs frequently and and doesn't really seem to have much compunction about being a bad guy. Um, but he does have this additional layer that's interesting of having the daughter, which kind of, you know, and, and having the wife who was killed in that that fight over the manual, it, it gives it gives him a little bit more depth. But he's basically kind of like you know he's a um, you know he he's one of these villains who enjoys being a villain it seems, and uh, but also it's kind of interesting that by the end of the movie like they set him up to be this real big villain, but then by the end. It's not really even clear who the bad guy is because the uh, the Lee Sai Nan character, her uncle, is kind of a kind of a nasty guy. Uh, you know, he he's the guy who sort of lives in this fortress that has a snake motif running through the whole thing. And when 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 uh, when Lee Sai Nan brings uh, Du Meng Fei to uh, to to the to the underground complex, he traps him. 
and he's about to have him killed. And he, and this he's just he's just so focused on revenge. He's willing to dispatch people, uh, you know, without a thought. And in the very end of the movie, uh, he, it, the situation that emerges is he seems to agree that he will spare the Rosamund Kwan character, uh, and he even you know agrees to spare her father provided the father comes to his headquarters and kowtows to his uh his great ancestors uh but then he he plans a uh, a secret attack in order to to um to 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 kill master lung by by having this dart not dart it's like an arrow trap arrow. that's going to hit him in the back of the head and it's set up so that is exactly when he kowtows his head will be in the right position he can hit him in his weak point and uh you know but then master lung is also planning on on uh on sort of you know you know not not staying true to his to the agreement and he tries to use his icy palm attack and uh and and i don't know is a uh, I, I i just sort of like the whole you know double cross sort of thing that was going on there yeah i liked how they were trying to out evil each other um and but the three main characters were so naive that they believed that you know these two were going to actually end up making amends with each other, so that they kind of played into each other's hand. But yeah, Jason um, Pai Piao did a really wonderful job in this villainous role. I, I think he makes a good villain when he plays one. Yeah, I I agree a hundred percent. And he's funny because he's one of these actors that it took me a long time to notice him. Like he just sort of. You would see him in these movies all the time, and you would know him by face. But it took me a while to really, you know, appreciate his performances. Um, and 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 he, and I think here he he's just a he, he's 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 I don't know I I wouldn't quite classify his character as a villain as much as just like a he's kind of like a um, he's corrupted by evil. Yeah, he's like I a mean, corrupted hero. He's. He, is the his revenge soaked brain is just is just so focused on revenge that he doesn't he doesn't see the evil that he's committing as a result um and, and he's willing to sacrifice his niece to get his end yeah yeah and he's he's and 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 and, and all of these virtues of the martial world like the filial piety and all these stuff they just become tools for him to help achieve his revenge do you know what i mean he's sort of exploiting mm-hmm. that that the the relationship that he has with his niece in order to get her to I mean she's not capable of defeating Master Lung. Master Lung is extremely powerful and and it's um and and so it, it, you know it, he, he 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 sort of it's it's weird because in a lot of these movies they will invoke the virtues in order to violate them in a way. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what he's doing. Um but uh but what did you think of the palm technique? I thought because again, this it's it's a feature of the, of the genre. You have these um, the manuals and 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 so and his and his ability, I believe, is called and I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but I think it's Ju Juan Force, which basically freezes people, and and it's it's it, it looks horrible. Like you get hit with it, and then you like slowly freeze to death, basically. Um, and and the uh, and and the uncle basically has the antidote to it. Um, which becomes an important plot point. That's why uh, uh, Meng Fei had gone to the uncle's headquarters in the first place. But but what did you think of the palm technique? I thought it was pretty cool. But I I do want to back up. Is there were two manuals. One had the the actual technique in it, and the other one had the antidote in it. So that when uh, the two families dueled over it and the one family was killed and the one wife was killed and uh, the uncle came in the um, two manuals got separated and one went with uh, each daughter so one went yeah. with uh, Carrie who is Kara who is character and one went with Rosemond's character so you don't get a complete picture without both of the manuals so basically they're both trying to get both of the manuals yeah that's true and 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 the way that uh rosamund kwan's character ended up with dragon sect is the masters of dragon sect showed up at that you know at that battle to to fend off the bad guy and then they 
the the female master ended up adopting her essentially with and 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 concealed her knowledge of the um uh you know of her parentage um yeah because jason pie yeah was going to actually kill her when she was a baby but she he was stopped and 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 I, and I want to get into I want to get into uh, there's some stuff I want to talk about with that but but before we do I just you know uh, did uh, in terms of the technique what did you think of of the of the of that as sort of the central lethal technique in the movie I think it's a good I- idea to have a frozen palm where wherever you're hit then it starts to spread out over your body um, and he looked cool doing it with all his hand motions and everything kind of get himself, get his chi up so that he could actually do it full, full force. And it's like, and you need the antidote right away. Otherwise you, you know, you die. So it's a very, I wouldn't say efficient technique because it does take a couple minutes for you to die, but it's a good movie technique. And what I liked about it too is that once Meng Fei had been hit with it and he started to suffer the effects, I found it very easy to imagine what the effects felt like because it, he, he was just cold. You know, I mean, it looked like he had a really mm-hmm. bad fever or something. And he was chilly. And it's really easy to put yourself in the shoes. Sometimes the techniques will do things like the person will turn purple and cough up blood. And I won't really have any idea what that feels like. Do you know what I mean? So this one I thought like, oh, I can appreciate what he's going through. I can sort of, I can get into the, I can get a sense of what this is supposed to feel like. Um, so I kind of like that. Uh, it was a simple thing, but it, it worked. In terms of the, I, I, I guess before we get into the parentage topic, I did want to sort of step from the the palm technique to the fighting in general, because the fighting in this I thought was somewhat distinct. And I was curious what you felt about the fight choreography and the and just the, the use of fighting in general in the film. I thought the use of fighting in the film was, it was really good. I didn't find it to be extravagant where, you know, sometimes in wuxia movies, the moves are just so unbelievable that you know that they really couldn't take place. Um, the only one that would have not really been able to take place was the frozen palm. But I think the other fighting was really good. It was very realistic and it it was more grounded than usual in a typical wuxia film. Yeah, and, and I they, thought no, it was. They did still have some of the lightness kung fu. I I quite like the wuxia um, style of of fighting, so I enjoy it when it's in movies. What I liked about this one though is number one, the performances were so impeccable. Like usually, there are moments in the movies when you see people's. The, the moves just don't look right at a certain moment. Do you know what I mean? Like usually, mm-hmm. you, you catch glimpses of. Of a of of a you know you know the human imperfection here they just did a really good job of making of you know either through the editing or through the or through you know just rigorous training and performance getting the performances to all look really on point and the the choreography was quite good all of the actors just seemed spry and like they they knew what they were doing and and the movements were thoroughly engaging there were there were very, there were there was this uh uh, I thought there was a really nice balance of kung fu and sword play, so that I yeah. got I got a really even mix of both of those things, and it never felt like they were half-assing either of them. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes you'll get a movie where like the kung fu is great, but they pick up a sword and it's like they're not even really trying. right, or vice versa. Yeah, and and this felt like they were they were fully committed to to all aspects of it. I thought that. Uh, that Kenny Ho did a great job. I was really impressed with his physical performance. I was obviously impressed with Kara Hoy and Jason Piepiao and everybody else. But uh, but Kenny Ho kind of surprised me here. And um, and I, Why? I I don't know. I just I just thought that he looked really amazing for some reason. I, I I he's not an actor that I've really paid much attention to in other things. And here I was like, oh, he's really like. You know, a lot of times one of the things that I really focus on with actors when I watch them move is their footwork, and I found his foot movement to be particularly good. Um, I'd have to watch it more than once to really weigh in any more than that. But but I was on one viewing, I was like, oh, I was really impressed with Kenny Ho in this. Um, and again, I, I it was largely because I was surprised. Um, 
but but I quite I quite liked all of the action in the movie, and I thought that you know there there wasn't a there wasn't a scene that had anything that I would criticize really in terms of the martial arts. It was it was it was all it was all nice, thrilling, fun martial arts fight choreography, and and that's kind of how the whole movie felt to me. It just felt you know it, it felt like a really good solid evening of entertainment where I got all the stuff that I want, and then. Uh, you know, and then it and then it wrapped it up in a really nice way, which we'll get to. But um, but I don't, did, you, did you have any other thoughts on the on the fighting, or did you maybe not agree with me a hundred percent on the Kenny Ho thing? No, I agree with you on with Kenny Ho. I I'd never seen him before this movie, so you know it. He did a good job. Yeah, no, and I know he's been. He's. Uh, I'm trying to think of what I have seen him in. I know I've seen him in other things. Um, but I think it's mostly like late '80s stuff. But it's just here. I I I I, I don't know. I I I wasn't expecting. I was expecting to be paying attention to other people during the movie. Do you know what I mm-hmm. mean? And and I ended up, you know, really enjoying his performance physically. Um. But uh, but what was it? The oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, the whole deal with um, with uh. Uh, Muwan Ur being kicked out of Dragon Sect when her her real parentage comes to light. I was curious <laughs> what you felt about that. Um, they're pretty heartless with her. Um, well, yeah, because they they knew what her parentage was. I guess they didn't think that it was going to come back to bite them in the butt. But um, I thought it was pretty mean that they were going to sacrifice her to save themselves. Well, and, and and in a way, she's she's the, a, a character that leapt to mind w- with her character was Luke Skywalker. I kept thinking of Luke Skywalker and how you know he's the the son of the main villain in the movie. Mm-hmm. And I was saying, gee, what would happen if Yoda had had acted this way towards Luke? You know, like how terrible would that be? Um, I mean, it's a different genre, obviously, but there's so much connection between those two that I thought that. Uh, it it was striking just how they you know just it was just heartless it was just you know just this this nice really like uh you know just a really good person being kicked out of the sect like that um and she didn't do anything i mean i could i would understand if she was doing something that was in support of her father but she had already kind of denounced him by that by that point she didn't want to have anything to do with it and you could tell but they were kicking her out anyway yeah no yeah. and then i mean and she she sort of does do the thing where she you know she try she she you know there there is a later scene where her and her father have an exchange she does kind of try to um reason with him a bit i suppose but but she's basically she's clearly not being turned to his side she you know uh she's at most she's reluctant to kill him because he's her father and she at least acknowledges that, but like, uh, and that's one of the things that leads sort of the Kara Hoy character to kind of, you know, initially be a little suspicious of her. But, uh, but yeah, I, I just thought that was kind of an interesting thing. The, uh, the other thing I want to talk about is the, the hyper efficient turn into melodrama at the end. Um, you know, there's this, uh, I mean, it, it wasn't like out of nowhere because, Kara Hoy's character and Kenny Ho's character, they, they, there's this scene when he first goes into the Snake Fortress, which is just what I'm calling the place. It's not what it was called in the movie. And, and in order to, to, to get, to, to save him from being killed by the uncle, she tells the uncle that he's her husband and they have to pretend to be married basically. And, and so, but it's not a real marriage. But then by the end of the movie, uh, and I, and I do want to talk about the final scene leading up to this after we discuss this, but, but when, when all of the carnage is, is done, uh, Rosamund Kwan has been accidentally poisoned by one of Karahui's darts and Karahui has been, uh, un, unbeknownst to everybody else, uh, mortally wounded by the, by the icy palm technique. And, and, and so, uh, Meng Fei asks her to give him the antidote to the to the dart and she only agrees when he agrees to marry her and so he marries her and then we see them in their marriage quarters and they're all dressed up like they've been married and 
and uh, and it becomes clear that she's dying, and and it sort of turns into like a very tender moment, but it's 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 very efficiently done, and so I just was curious what your thoughts were on that part of the movie. Did not see that part coming. Um, yeah, it was very efficiently done. It was a smooth transition, and you she doesn't reveal anything until the very end like she's about to die and then she tells them that she's gonna die and that was really smooth you would think that would be in like an awkward kind of moment in there but he but this was what what i thought is that he was begging pretty much for the antidote and would do anything to save her so uh not kara hui's character but um the Rose other ones yeah character um so that you know because he was in love with her and you know he was just going to marry her to get the the antidote and ride off into the sunset once uh his real love was uh healed and saved but um and then you know we know that Kara Hui was hit by the icy palm but the other two characters don't so you know that the audience knows that she's going to die. Yeah. So, you know, those two are going to, um, Meng Fei and uh, Mu Wan Er are going to live happily ever after. But then there's a twist. Yeah, and, and also in that scene, I was I started to think, oh, maybe he really did love the um, uh, the uh, Lee Sai Nan character. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe, maybe, maybe he just was being protective of Mu on Er because she was a good person. But perhaps all of the stuff because he and, and Lee Sai Nan did have like a really full relationship in the movie. They had a mm-hmm. uh, they had a you know, there was a history there and and I thought that I could see maybe he was more in love with her and he just didn't show it until that moment. Or it's possible he was just, you know, being dutiful to her because he had married her and he decided that he was gonna, you know, you know, be dutiful in that situation. Um, but either way, it leads to a scene at the end where they're at her graveside, and it's clear that he has no intention of being with the Rosamund Kwan character after that. That that he, you know, seems to want to honor the memory of this woman who he was married to very briefly. Um, but the the reason that I and and you have to forgive me, Lady Chow Fung, because I'm going to talk about Doctor Who, um, but it's <laughs> relevant. Uh, to me, this is an example of how to do this idea of condensed storytelling well. It 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 very quickly moved into this super melodramatic scene, but enough groundwork had been laid that I cared about all of the characters when that was unfolding. And I wanted right. I wanted them to have a happy outcome. And the fact that they weren't going to have one, that it was going to end tragically, was moving as a result. Uh there was a, a season of Doctor Who where they where they made the whole season all about condensed storytelling, and to me it was an example of how not to do condensed storytelling, and and you do it by loading a movie or a show with all kinds of backstory that comes so quickly that you can't develop any emotional attachment to the new characters that they're introducing, and and here I thought that everything this is what was it it was an hour and 28 minutes or something it was a very short movie at least the version we saw and we saw it on the prime version and uh but it still managed to i still managed to emotionally connect with all the stuff that was going on even though it was happening really quickly and they were introducing things very fast and so to me that's a sign that that the even though it was hyper efficient the techniques they were using were really effective and were working for me yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I, I had an emotional connection with all three of the main characters, um, and I had an opinion about all of the characters. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, so, and it happened very quickly, maybe an hour and a half tops, you know, so I, it wasn't very long, but you there was so much meat in that short amount of time that you felt connected to the people that were in the movie and you cared about what happened to them. So when there wasn't that happy men ending, it kind of, well, for me, you know how 
not getting the happy ending can sometimes leave me like kind of deflated, but I was not deflated. I was satisfied because then it's really revealed who his, well, I think it reveals who his true love is in the end of the story. Um, For me, it was kind of wavering back and forth and at at each scene, you never knew really who it was. It it was still uplifting. Like it ends in, you know, obviously spoilers. If you haven't, you know, we, we, we spoiled it already, but spoilers, she dies. And, uh, but she dies in a way that, like you say, it sort of, it, it either shows who his true love was, or at the very least, it shows something about his noble character that is, you know, you know, leaves an impression on you. And, and so you just, you, you, you know, you have this sad thing that happens, but you also, it's also kind of counterbalanced by, uh, by I don't know. A, a, you you get to see a, a good dose of humanity, and and it's uh and so it's not all bad. Um, but yeah, I think the uh the 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 ending in general I, I quite liked, and that that final scene, the final battle, I thought was really excellently done. And I I, I felt like again, I don't know what the title was supposed to be in Chinese because oftentimes when we do these movies, the titles are totally different in the Chinese than in the English version, but. I felt like the title long road to gallantry, which the whole movie, I'm like, well, what's this, what does this mean? What is the, the long road to gallantry all about? I felt like that became very apparent in the final battle. And I don't know if you, if you agree with that or if that, you know, crossed your mind, but, uh, you know, I don't know what your thoughts are. No, I, I never crossed my mind. It kind of, um, I did wonder what the long road to gallantry kind of meant. Still a little confused about that. Um, well, I think, and I might be, I might be uh, forcing it. Like maybe I'm not, you know, sometimes I'll really squint my eyes and see something that's not there. But my thought was the long road to gallantry is sort of like when I hear long road, I think like a tiresome, like like weathering journey do you know what i mean like yeah this is not a good thing necessarily and at the end of the movie the result is everybody dies except for the three characters that we've been following but every like all of all of dragon sect is killed right like all of the, i mean maybe not all but much of thunder Th- thunder gang is killed the the uncle dies uh the the uh, master lung dies the head of dragon sect dies and and so it's all kind of all for nothing like all the 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 settling of this grudge uh is is you know it it results in 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 so much death and and at the and 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 i guess because uh uh meng fei at the start of the movie he is told go out protect the poor and uphold justice he's basically meant to be a gallant hero from the very beginning Mm -hmm. And and so this is his long road to gallantry. And by the end, he he's clearly a gallant hero. He 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 because at the start of the movie, he's kind of got a playful, arrogant uh, quality that is like maybe the one one part of his personality that doesn't feel quite heroic. Do you know what I mean? Like he he's kind of tormenting the Karahoy character to a degree in a playful way, but he's still kind of not uh he's a little bit disrespectful to her at times. Do you know what I mean? And, Mm -hmm. and, but by the end of the movie, he is dutiful. He's, he's, he's a dutiful husband to her mourning by her gravesite. And so I feel like that's the, the long road to gallantry sort of culminates in that final battle. If that makes sense. It's a, yeah, it does. uh, It does. And, uh, and so I thought it was a nice, I don't know when the title sort of makes sense to me at the end of the movie. I, I like it. And, and uh and i like that you know it's 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 kind of a somber somber take on what it means to be a gallant hero like by the time he gets there he's just gone through all this terrible terrible stuff and uh and even the good you know the the good things that happen to him are so fleeting um right so so that's kind of what i what, what you know what i liked about it um but in terms of the the fighting, what did you think of that last battle? I like the last battle. Again, there was so much 
going on. But sometimes when you have a lot going on in a final battle, it can be very chaotic. But it was yeah. easy to follow. And it was important for the audience to see that Kara Hui was hit by the icy palm. Yeah. But the other characters didn't, which I, I thought was a very important element that didn't go unnoticed. Yeah, because um, they slowed that, down the frame rate at that time. It was like a slow motion hit. And so you, right. you really pay attention to it. And, you you know, if sometimes things that are important can be lost in the chaos of so many people fighting, but not here. I like the way that they did it. Yeah, because I find the older I get, the harder it is for me to always notice everything in a fight too I, I think maybe my eyes are just getting old um, mm-hmm. and thing I appreciated about this movie was it's sort of it's it's if, if you feel at all impaired in that respect it was very easy I thought to to follow all of the visual elements there was nothing confusing about the fights they weren't simple they were they, they still had a complexity to them but you could you could clearly follow every every beat of the fight and the costuming was so well done that all the characters really stood out and you knew who was who. Um, I, I, that's another thing I liked about this movie is the costuming. The, 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 color, the color palettes were, 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 uh, were just really nice. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not a color person, so I don't quite know how to express this. But I liked like, the green that was going on with, with, uh, with Lee Sinan's uncle. And I liked, the, I liked the blues that a lot of people were wearing. And the red. I like the orange. Who had the orange? I don't remember the orange um, quite as much. Wasn't it? Uh... Oh, hold on. I gotta get back to the right page. I thought it was um, Chief Ling Chen Lei that had the orange in one of the scenes. It was kind of like a shimmery orange, or was that red? I don't remember. I, I remember seeing orange. a lot of reds, um, but I, I'd have to go back and watch it because my memory is a little bit shoddy on the color front. But but I do but I do remember being very it, similar to how I was very impressed with the Holy Flame and the Martial World uh, colors and the Buddha Palm colors. But this was different because this felt more like really solid colors. Do you know what I mean? They weren't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't candy. It wasn't glittery. It was it was just solid but but nice combinations of colors and and and, i mean it felt very 80s but it worked it worked really well i thought and and i thought that the costumes were just uh were were good at helping you distinguish the characters which which i mean is an important function of the costuming so so it was another part of the movie that i liked um but yeah i i I don't know what what's your what what's your overall take on this film what do you what would you say uh, if somebody was asking, should they watch this and where it ranks, what would your statement be? As a Kara Hui film, I quite enjoyed it. It had some um, some surprises with the characters. I mean, the roles that some people played in the movie. I enjoyed everything about this movie. I think you should definitely get see it especially if you're a fan of hers um i wouldn't rank it up with like lady is the boss or my young auntie um but it's still a really good film in its own right it's different because you know there's not a lot of comedy in it and uh that would have been really out of place there were some you know cute little moments because of um meng fei's I guess lack of being out in the world um, kind of made some of the situations a little funny. Um, but yeah, it's a really good movie. It's definitely not her best, but it's not the worst either. Yeah, I, w- I would kind of agree. Like, I, I think uh, I think if you are hungry for more Kara Hoy movies, this is definitely a good one to see. In terms of her physical performance, it's top notch. In terms of the the movie itself it's a good movie it's like a, I, th- I thought it was a pleasantly surprising film and i would definitely say if you like wuxia it's, it's 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 worth watching it's got it's got all the stuff that i like if it, it's the kind of film where i wouldn't rank it up there like you say with like the great wuxia movies and i wouldn't rank it up there with maybe the great karahoi movies but 
it's the kind of film when I go to the movie theater, it's the kind of experience that I'm, I'm hoping to get. Do you know what I mean? And, Mm -hmm. and, 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 and if I get that, I'm quite satisfied. It, it doesn't quite rise to the level of, Oh my God, that was an amazing movie. Um, but, but very few films do. And I thought, so this is one where it's a, it's a really solid evening of Wuxia entertainment it's a it's a good Karahoi performance. Kenny Ho does a really good job in this one, and Rosamund Kwan plays a really good character too. And the villains are fun. It's just got a lot of really fun, enjoyable stuff in it. And and uh, I think it's a it's again it's not the if you've never seen a Wuxia movie, it might not be the best one to be your first introduction to Wuxia. But it's uh but if you if you've seen Wuxia movies and you're hungry for a good Wuxia film, this is definitely something worth watching. Um, and I, like I say, I was, I was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised by this film. I, uh, I, 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 I guess the, the, my overall emotion during the movie was just delight. I just had a delighted reaction to the film. Um, and so I, I, again, I, if I, if, uh, not that we watch these movies in, in theaters, um, but this is like a good popcorn movie in my opinion. And, uh, and, you know, just something that might be good to watch with a group of friends as well um but yeah so again the movie is the long road to gallantry it's a 1984 film and it's one of the later uh you know later shaw brothers movies and it's uh directed by tang tak chung and uh and yeah so also i keep forgetting to mention this at the beginning of the podcast but if you enjoy listening to this show, if you if you want to help us up our game, you can support us on Patreon. We have a Patreon page, which we always link at the description below. And we just use it mainly for, you know, purchasing movies and things like that when we need to. We, we try to stick to Amazon Prime and Netflix so that people who are following the podcast can also watch it. But occasionally we want to, you know, venture out and do other movies. And even though oftentimes it'll be a movie that like I or Lady Chow Fung have access to. We need everybody on the show to have access to it. And that requires that we, we actually purchase the DVD uh, or, or rent it on, on a streaming service somewhere for everybody. So that's what the Patreon largely uh, helps us with. And, and so, and, and also we want to thank everybody who already does support the Patreon page, but, uh, but yeah, so I don't know, uh, Lady Chow Fung, do you have anything to add before we head out? Uh, it's a good movie. Watch it um, and bring your popcorn because it definitely is enjoyable. Okay, and and so we'll be back on uh, next month. We're going to be doing uh, Black Magic as our theme, so we're going to be doing a lot of Halloween, uh, you know, related things. And I think we have some nice movies lined up. We're still hammering out exactly what films we're going to watch. Are we leading with Black Magic? Was that going to be the original yes. plan? All right, so so we're going to do Black Magic, which which I think is a great movie. Uh, uh, we will, I believe, also be doing part two, which a lot of people think is superior. But I, part one has a special place in my heart, and and so we'll be doing that and some other films. And again, this is uh, we did uh, Karahoi month. I I think we, I've noticed that everybody on the program has a very strong reaction to Karahoi. So I think it's safe to say she's possibly the most popular actor that we deal with on this show at least among the people who you know i mean i know you have people that you that you that you think even more highly of but but in gen if we if we pulled together the person everybody agrees is is one of our favorites i think she's up there and uh and so i would encourage anybody who's interested in this style of 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 filmmaking to to maybe explore some of her other films because this month we had to limit ourselves to things that we didn't uh, didn't do already and so like you were saying you couldn't rank this one up there with Lady is the Boss or My Young Auntie but we had already done My Young Auntie so we couldn't do it this month and there are a lot of other films out there that are worth checking out with her so, so definitely yeah, she has an extensive um, videography that everybody should uh, delve into there were some movies that we couldn't even get a hold of Yeah, uh, all of us so um, yeah definitely check some out yeah, in fact, um, you know, like I said, this this weekend, I don't I don't think we want to reveal the name of the movie yet, but we are going to talk about another film that she did, 
Um, but again, it's not one of the movies that would be our top ranked film. It was another movie that we just happened to get a hold of that we wanted to do. Um, and we'll, 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 we'll reveal our opinions on the movie itself when we, uh, when we get there. But, uh, but she's got a, she's got an enormous, uh, catalog of films, like we were saying. And some of the movies that I would recommend to people, uh, that are maybe more recent are films like Mrs. K, which we couldn't do. Um, daughter, which I really enjoyed. A lot of people were pretty critical of that movie, but I really thought she did a very good job in Daughter, and I, I thought that the mood and atmosphere of Daughter was great. It's kind of like an Exorcist type film. Um, she also has an interesting role in Rigor Mortis. But one of my favorite uh, performances is the 2011 film Dragon, which is also called uh, Wuxia, starring Donnie Yen. She plays a minor character, but there is a fight scene between her and Donnie Yen that starts as a roof chase and then becomes this this massive fight inside of a, uh, I think like a, a barn or something. I can't quite remember, but it's a, it's a you know, I, the, the specifics of the, of, of what the house is doesn't matter. The fight is one of the best fights ever filmed. And, uh, and this is 2011. So this is ages after after you know her uh her early days at shaw brothers and she still does an amazing job um so you know uh you know and, and obviously my young auntie and any number of other films that that we we've covered previously on the uh, on the on the podcast so uh so yeah so so we'll be back on uh next week and it's going to be halloween month so we'll be doing that as a theme and feel free to send us your suggestions for themes you'd like to see. We always like to hear from people. Feel free to send us feedback, questions, thoughts. If we can, we will raise them on the podcast. And until then, we will talk to you later. Bye.